have you ever seen anything like this? When these girls, these women, were found behind the Golden Key Motel in that dirty drainage ditch. He actually expressed, as far as I'm concerned, his art by the way he positioned them. If you think about it, these girls, in his mind, were nothing but garbage. The mind of a serial killer is a prison of warped desires and disturbing hidden memories. And if we were going to find out who the Eastbound Strangler was, we needed to talk to the best of the best at analyzing serial killers' minds. And that's John Kelly, a noted criminal profiler who's worked on serial killer cases across the nation. And he literally wrote the profile on the Eastbound Strangler, Atlantic City serial killer, which brought Gary Britton and myself to him. We thought that his profile gave us a person of interest that we've been working for some time now. I think you're definitely on to something with Dennis Gaskill. When a source in Atlantic County handed us disturbing drawings that were among items found in a deserted patch of woods in tires, less than four miles from the motel where the four prostitutes' bodies were dumped in 2006, we knew we had to get to John. Violent sexual predators are extremely hypersexual. And this, to me, looks like a very, very hypersexual person who may be in a sexual identity crisis. We met last Thursday at Lehigh University in Bethlehem, PA. Gary and I had two objectives. First, get the drawings interpreted to see if they could have been made by the eastbound strangler or another killer. And second, examine them for any connection, if possible, to our person of interest, Dennis Gaskill. Now the drawings represented people, as I told you before, with both male and female body parts in some orgasmic positions. Gaskell, who committed suicide in 2010, had drawn similar pictures in the past, and Gary had seen those during his previous investigation, but we can't tell for sure if he was the one drawing these. See, this is the hypersexuality we're looking for. But where's the violence? Where's the... I think I might have found it. Gary, when you strangle someone, what happens to their face? Well. You have, look at your marks going around the neck, you're also cutting off the blood flow to the brain, which is causing petechial hemorrhages in the eyeballs and small hemorrhages in the facial structure. So you won't be able to see it in the capillaries of the facial structure. Well, right here, you've got something around this individual's neck, you've got eyes bulging out of their sockets, and you have red on the face. I wondered if this was a paper death mask, a handmade image created by the killer depicting the moment this woman lost her life. Now see, this is very, very interesting. You've got this person who is just a female face in the crown who has become a sexual entity for whatever reason. Who is this person? Do you recognize her? She doesn't look like the Stranglers' four victims, but we don't know who she is and we'd like to find out. And then I finally asked John about the hand-drawn detailed map that we talked about earlier. I see the church. Again, I see a ship coming in. This person obviously has drawn a time machine because they want to go back to a time I have to feel that was better for them and they were happier. Obviously, this person is not happy with their reality. A meeting with John Kelly is always something where we learn a lot, but there's still a lot of questions to be answered, and some that he wants answered. One of them we're going to follow up next week, which is the notation on the back of these cards that could indicate a local strip club that this person might have frequented, and we're going to try and find out more about it.